article the other day about uh, Jordan Peterson losing his license. Like, he went to the, the review board, and they're like, hey, your tweets are shitty, and your conduct is shitty, and you represent us, and because of that, we are going to take away your license unless you amend your, your uh, behavior. Jordan Peterson made a video reacting to that. JBP, on his own video, he called himself JBP, uh, reacts to court decision. Let's see. Despite my proclivity to feel guilt, which is quite substantive, <laughs> and despite my temperamental unwillingness to engage in conflict, not only do I not see what I did wrong. Jordan doesn't engage I in conflict? I think what I've done on the public communication front is my responsibility as a clinician to tell the truth about what I see. <laughs> so we'll make it public. <laughs> what a badass dude. Uh, he's so cool. Um, so he was transphobic to like Elliot Page on, on Twitter and he's getting, he's getting repercussions for his speech. And he thinks that as a clinician, which he's going to not be anymore, he's double, he's tripling down, dude. This is his whole thing. I told you. Wow. What an intro. Turn down a little bit. What an intro. He's so smart. You can tell he's smart because that was classical music. And classical music is what smart people listen to. Smart. Each Dad, nice to see you. Michaela. Michaela Peterson. All steak diet. Hey, Mick. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. How are you? Wow. You know how you talk. Good, actually. All things considered, I'm in Milwaukee. Looking forward to the presidential debate tonight. That's fun. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> perplexed, I would say, about the situation Didn't in Canada. Good. I've been thinking about it this morning. As you know, the... He looks so fucking crazy, dude. I know that this is the scheme from his... This shit here. But, like, he, he, he literally looks like Tommy Lee Jones in the Batman movie. Tommy Lee Jones, Two Face. I mean, let's be real. It's crazy, dude. It, look at this. That's the suit. This is what I was talking about. That's the one. It's the same fucking suit. <laughs> How? How do you do this on accident? On purpose? It looks like shit. This looks like shit. The the court that we appealed the College of Psychologists decision to mm -hmm. decided that the college has, it's within the college's purview to- Yeah, his own signature on his own, insane. Stop me from having any political opinions, as far as I can tell. <laughs> having political opinions. Uh, no, uh, you can have political opinions, you just can't also be accredited by their, you know, system you, they just will not accept you as a member of their shit because you you don't agree with the <laughs> the widely accepted understanding of this social phenomenon and as a mental health provider like a practitioner like a guy who does that uh you're obviously bad for that community uh and you do not you do not properly represent your peers and so they don't want you in their group that makes sense the the um the decision, which I posted on Twitter and will post in the description of this video, starts out by up? making a case for the fundamental reality of freedom of speech for Canadians in Canada, and then says, but, and that's always a bad start when you're talking about freedom of speech, but <laughs> apparently the college has the right to decide that I can be re-educated forcibly with the risk of my license, essentially because I made political statements that the members of the college don't agree with. And those, those, those for years like repeated instances of flying in the face of the people that accredited you like they just they do not want you representing them unless you have more tact and you don't this is the world that jordan peterson wants by the way he just wants to be the people on the board kicking people out of that space he wants the same fucking thing for his politics he wouldn't, he wouldn't allow, like, a trans teacher union, you know what I mean? His um, opinions involve two criticisms of Justin Trudeau, one criticism of his chief of staff, one criticism of an Ottawa city councillor, and then my objection on Joe Ro Rogan to the climate apocalyptic fear-mongering that idiot tyrants are foisting on the general population. 
<laughs> so also, I'm a climate change denier and I'm a transphobe. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, they just don't want you in the, Now, apparently that makes me thing. unprofessional yes. and a uh, disgrace to the profession such that I am now going to be required, the college can go ahead with this, to put me into a re-education program with their so-called social media experts. And that's also, by the way, a profession that does not exist. It, it does. There's actually, is social media is real and it's a thing that experts have expertise on, actually. Until I learn my lesson, whatever that is, regardless of how much time- It wasn't a thing when he was a kid because there was no social media. However, old man now, different times. There are actually social media experts. And that takes by their judgment or they can take my license away. Uh -huh. And so the, co the court says, well, of course you have freedom of speech, Dr. Peterson, but because you're a professional, you're bound by your professional organization. And apparently they're not bound, even though they're a government organization fundamentally, apparently they're not bound by that fundamental constitutional axiom. And so that shows you all you Canadians who are listening and everyone outside of the country who might be the least bit interested in Canada, that shows you exactly what our bloody constitution is worth. And if Canadians are so daft that they don't think that that's a problem, well, they're going to figure it out over the next 15 years because there's absolutely no excuse for this. So that's what I'm thinking. Now there's part of me that's thinking. <laughs> he thinks that he, he, look how sad he is. Hold on, I need to. <laughs> you know, it happens. It happens sometimes and you just have to. You just have to. It's, it's the rules. <clears throat> uh, I don't know why he thinks that in 15 years there's going to be a constitutional crisis and the first domino in that was Jordan Peterson loses his fucking license. Ping! <laughs> like, shut up. Well, look, Peterson, the College <laughs> of Psychologists is after you. You've taken it to court. Now the I just put my hands on the W key, like W-A-S-D, because I, I've been playing Baldur's Gate. So <laughs> I just put them there to rest. Fucking broken, dude. Brain smashed. Judges have decided that you're wrong. Maybe you're wrong. And I think, well, I expressed political <laughs> sentiment and I'm actually informed. And so for the life of me, I can't see how I'm wrong. I think I have a responsibility to say what I think, and I think many people agree with that, and I think the fundamental consequence of that around the world uh, has why been am I wrong? massively beneficial. So I think, I think, number one, what the hell? And number two, bring it on and see what happens, because I will make absolutely every bit of this public in a way that the college and the courts can hardly even imagine. Incredible. Uh, he has the same tantrum-throwing bullshit as Donald Trump, essentially. It's not been a good year for right-wingers. It it's been bad. Like we we got look we're on we got mug watch. Uh, Bolsonaro lost. Brazil just banned hate speech. Uh, Jordan Peterson's losing his license. Dan Plum, thanks to the Prime. I think nature is healing a little bit. Like social nature, he's healing a little bit. Not a lot of bit, just a tiny bit. We're we're fixing some we're fixing some problems. Other problems I are going to rise up. Master, thanks for twenty nine months. Uh, but I think a lot of people are really tired of this kind of stuff. It's it's old, man. So away we go. So that's how I'm doing. <laughs> that's how you're doing. Okay, but good. <laughs> yeah, but good. You know, I mean, <laughs> I didn't look. The court decision was worse than I thought it would be. I was already pessimistic. I figured the court would take the coward's way out. And she doesn't look very comfortable in front of camera. She keeps readjusting. And basically upgrade the college for procedural inadequacy. Because one of the things the college did, which is just beyond comprehension as far as I'm concerned, is pursue these complaints that were uh, put forward by people distributed all over the world who then claimed in writing falsely to be my clients. He's so fucking dumb. He wrote a book. He wrote a book where he published secret information about his clients and talked about it. He wrote a book where he talked about his client, 12 Rules for Life. I've read it. There's a whole series you can talk about. You can watch it if you want. Uh, he wrote... And in that, one of his patients was discussed, many of his patients were discussed, but one of his patients specifically was discussed, where he had an internal monologue in the book about how he believed she deserved her sexual assault because she was drunk at the time. This is the type of fucking guy we're talking about. He's just dog shit. He's a dog shit guy. When in fact, they were never my clients, and not only were they not my clients, they yeah. had nothing to do with anyone who was ever a client of mine. And so... I figured at least the court would say, well, you know, of course you have the right to police professionals because you're a professional governing body, but they didn't even do that. They just basically said, well, of course you have the right to freedom of speech, except when it comes to, let's say, political opinions. How does he still have a license? Uh, the process hasn't finished yet. <laughs> he won't when this is over. So, you know, then what right do you have at all? And, you know, it's terrible, Michaela, because I know perfectly well from talking to many physicians, physicians in particular, but also lawyers and psychologists, that 
No one in Canada, arguably, and this is also extremely strange, it's surreal. There's no one in Canada except me. Your friends are stupid, Toxicata. That's the answer. I'm sorry to break this to you. If you have friends that like Jordan Peterson, they're fucking idiots. Here's what it is. A lot of people you like in life are going to be dumb fucking idiots. Here's what it is. You, it's it's up to you and anybody else who doesn't like Jordan Peterson to talk them out of that position because it is absolutely abysmal. There's no one in Canada except him, Sag. True! That's actually in a position to fight this because it's hyper expensive and I don't know if my insurance will cover it. It's hyper expensive. It's- Aw, his insurance won't cover it. Stressful, it's complex, it's time consuming. It could involve the uh, suspension of my license. Yeah. Um, and there's not really anything that, that can be done to me that's a threat. I'm not serving as a clinician. I don't have a practice anymore because that became impossible, even though I love doing it. And I'm also not very happy about that. So I'm like the person who can do this. And Canadians have I no- I told you he didn't give a shit. No idea. To he cares a lot about being called Dr. Jordan Peterson, though. What degree professionals in Canada are now required not to say what they think or to lie outright. It's funny how you can frame any baited or ignorant position as just a difference in political opinion. Right. I mean, this isn't like a difference in political opinion. This is an extreme right-wing opinion he has. He has. A, he's an extreme right-winger. He doesn't believe he is because he's stupid and a grifter. And this is what it is, man. So, for example, therapists are required by law to lie about, let's say, the gender identity of minors. And so, lie. for me, especially on the therapy... The gender identity of a minor is something you can't you can't know until you ask it's the gender identity jordan the identity therapy side if if you're required by law and do you identify as jordan peterson of course but not because you're named that because you are jordan peterson if your name was stripped away by the government would you still be jordan peterson of course you would by your professional organization to who, lie cowardly. Who you're are you independent of bureaucracy, my guy? Therapist, because the only thing you've got as a therapist is honesty. That's it. Honesty is what's curative. That'd be fucking fascinating for Jordan Peterson to have. Do you think he's ever had an honest conversation with someone who doesn't suck his dick the whole fucking time? For real? Outside of a debate? So. And even then, they're so cordial. You know, it's just part of how surreal the world is and, and particularly how surreal Canada is. I identify as a licensed clinician. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard. Dude, that should be the thumbnail. I identify as a licensed clinician on the thumbnail on Jordan Peterson's face. Hard to fathom. Yeah. It is hard to fathom. Can I read <laughs> just a couple of sentences from the decision so people have an idea of what's in here? It's Incredible. linked below. People can read the entire thing. But there's parts, like this is how it begins. When individuals join a regulated profession, they do not lose their charter right to freedom of expression. At the same time, however, they take on obligations and must abide by the rules of their regulatory body that may limit their freedom of expression. Yep. That's just one sentence after another. That's how it starts. Yeah, yeah, perfect. That, it's a great thing to highlight, you know. It's it's like, well, you have this. So it's it's a conduct it's a conduct to understand. So like you 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 do have freedom of speech. However, they reserve the right to monitor your conduct and see if they want you to represent them. Like this is normal. This He would be fine with this if they were like a capitalist institution kicking out like a trans activist or something like, well, I mean, get woke, go broke. You feel me? It's fundamental right. But, <laughs> well, but what? What rules? There's what? There's a rule, eh? There's a rule. Is that right? That the College of Psychologists has that yes. I can't criticize Justin Trudeau on Twitter. No, you can actually criticize Justin Trudeau. It's what you say when you do it and how in your breadth of I mean, this has been brewing since fucking, what, Bill C-16? So 2014 or something like that, 2015? That's a rule, is it? And if someone <laughs> anywhere in the world complains about the fact that I've criticized Justin Trudeau, let's say, he's that so all of a sudden stupid. that's a rule, even though he's it wasn't a rule. Mad. And of course I get to criticize Justin Trudeau, not only because he richly deserves it in every way you can possibly imagine, <laughs> but because that's actually what freedom of speech means. So I have no idea what the court means by, you know, abiding by the rules. So yeah. the rules are whatever the bloody College of Psychologists determines constitutes a rule. Yes, that's how rules are. They're a hey, rules are social constructs. Did you know that? What? After the fact, given their complete freedom to make manifest any rules they want. That's how yes. rules it's are. It's beyond comprehension. It's not. Uh, it's it's just an amendment. It's cold. Uh, Terrapin Nation! Maryland? A Maryland basketball slash football fan? We have a sportser in chat? Fucking wild. You don't get a lot of sportsers in chat. I feel like the only guy here ever. And yes, but, but I have freedom of speech. It's like, do I now? What do I get to talk about? 
Apparently, I can't even talk about the weather. You know, here's <laughs> here's another fact. This is literally. Oh, a deadhead. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Not a sportser. Be the truth. People can submit a complaint to the College of Psychologists from anywhere in the world. And so someone in the States submitted a complaint about the, conver the last conversation I had with Joe Rogan, where I <laughs> yeah. expressed my doubts about the validity of economic predictions yes, based on congrats. climate science. They, the complainants, submitted the entire transcript, right? Yeah. The three-hour conversation as evidence of my unprofessional behavior. Yes. And the college, which did not have to pursue that complaint, mm -hmm. went forward with it. Yeah. Because what you said on the Joe Rogan podcast, was a lot of it was bananas, man. So, like, okay... I talked to Joe for three hours. This is not deep fake. He, he literally chose to look like this today. Apparently, everything I said in that three hours was unprofessional and a disgrace to the, to the profession. Uh, I bet if you asked them, they'd be like, well, we submitted it because it's easier. <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know. They didn't like it, man. They didn't like what you were saying. They get to do that. Go somewhere else that uh, accepts you if you're really upset about this. So, like... I guarantee you Liberty University in the United States will give you an honorary, uh, you can do therapy degree. <laughs> he looks like Two-Face. Alex, I was saying that earlier. I literally pulled it up earlier. Do I still have it? I don't. I don't. But, yeah, he does. He really do. Open image. Open image. Wait, why can't I click on the image, bro? Wow. I had to open a whole second thing. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Whoops. Tommy Lee Jones. It's literally the same color scheme. Like, it, if you took an eyedropper tool, whip. Boop, 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 boop. This is just uh, velvet, so it uh, you know, reflects the light a little different. <laughs> well, what am I supposed to do about that? The answer is, well, we're going to appeal the decision. I will take this to the Supreme Court. I don't think that... Any judges will have either the wisdom or the courage to rule about this properly, except at the Supreme Court level. And I'm not particularly optimistic about that either. He's going to take this to the Supreme Court. About that either. I don't see how you can win this without overturning colleges in general. And I don't, like, that's not a good look for the colleges to lose this. So won't the Supreme Court, I know they're not supposed to be pressured, but won't they, what's the benefit for them for ruling in your favor? Dude, this whole, this whole family is just a victim, dude. Other well, than the benefit would be that they support, well, they would support the most fundamental principle of a free society, right? It's like, why do you have the right to freedom of speech? Well, the answer is, is because there's no difference between free speech and thinking, no difference between free speech and dialogue, and no difference between free speech and problem solving and negotiation. There's a way, there's a big difference between thinking and speaking, actually. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's a doctor or whatever. I'm no doctor. Uh, but there is a difference, in fact, between... And speaking, because you couldn't hear what I just said, which is good because it was banned. And so, and therefore peace. If you eliminate that, people can no longer think, they can no longer adapt, they can no longer negotiate, they no longer even know how to orient themselves. Benzo developed telepathy? In the world. And so, in principle, the advantage <coughs> uh, for the Supreme Court is that mm -hmm. they rule in favor of the most fundamental principle upon which civil democracy itself is predicated. Yeah. Should we allow our, our psychologists and therapists to be fucking crazy? No, is the answer. Good. Now, I don't think we have the right to free speech in Canada. I think this this uh, this decision today demonstrates that, obviously. I saw the same thing with the Law Society in Canada. Partly was why I'm not surprised at this ruling. I've been through this before. And I see that Canada's walked down that idiot path for at least 30 years. So our country is in... Well, this is where I start to get doubtful. It's like, either I'm wrong... Yep. Either I'm wrong or massive conspiracy theory... <laughs> Either I'm wrong. Could I be wrong? Could I be the bad guy? Nah. Nah, there's nothing wrong with what's going on here. <laughs> or the country is in trouble. Now, to tell you the truth, I would rather be wrong. But I thought it through. It's like, okay, what did I do exactly? Yep. None of my clients complained. That has nothing to do with this. Wow. And I expressed my political opinions, which I have a right to do, which I believe were correct. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Turns out, you were wrong. I think that, and Canadians agree with this now. The last poll indicated that Canadians believe that Justin Trudeau is the worst prime minister we've ever had. Well, that was sort of my point a year ago, you know? And so, if I can't say that, and uh -huh. yet a majority of Canadians believe it to be true, and believe me, a lot more of them are going to believe that, 
a lot more are going to believe that in the relatively near future. In what sense do I have anything even approximating freedom of speech? And if yeah. I can't have that opinion, and therefore, in principle, no one can, then what do we do when we're stuck with a prime minister, let's say, who everyone has decided is the worst prime minister the country's ever had? Well, uh... move, run, if you can. Well, this is another reason, you know, why I'm in a position that I can fight this, eh? because the worst thing that could happen is the college can take away my license. Three in 10. So this isn't most. This is 30%. Three in 10 say Justin Trudeau is the worst recent PM. One in five call Pierre Trudeau the best. Wow. Um, that's 30%. <laughs> and this is from July of this year, so not like a month ago. Uh, not Not most. Personally, that's, you know, he's not a mathematician. I didn't expect him to get it right. You know, what are the, what, what are our standards here, chat? Is he supposed to say correct things regularly? I don't know. The man should be able to make up lies from time to time. Don't you think, don't you think it's reasonable that Jordan Peterson lies for 10 straight years without consequence? That's free speech, baby. Now, I already know that if my license gets taken away, there are other jurisdictions that will grant me a license the next day. See? Told you you didn't care. And, you know, there's a, real comedic, there's a real comedic element to that because I could lose my license in Ontario and instantly be licensed in at least three other jurisdictions. And so that's not going to look very good with regard to the Ontario College of Psychologists. Well, it's and like so, they got rid of you. Well, and fair enough. And if that's what they want. I mean, the other problem that the college is going to face is that, and I don't know exactly what they're going to make of this, but all the people who are involved in this prosecution are going to find very soon that this will eat their life. <laughs> He's threatening the prosecution. So, you know, me media perspective. I've offered, yeah. well, I've offered to the college to negotiate. I actually have a solution in mind. And I've heard the odd comment indicating that maybe that's a possibility. I reached out a month ago with an idea. They haven't got back to me. I think they're waiting for this decision to tell you the truth. And of course, they're going to be entirely emboldened by this. I know the solution, which I'm, I'm not going to discuss in this podcast. You know, I have to talk to them first. I have a reasonable solution. But um, and why don't I just resign with my license intact? I also know or think I know, you know, you might ask, well, why is the college doing this? And my suspicions are, because I've, this is, we've been through this before, you know, when Cambridge University canceled my, the seminar I was going to conduct there on Exodus, I found it eventually. On Exodus, not a right-wing uh, Christian nationalist, however, <laughs> for years. That it was basically one person who was behind all of that. There were two more that were associated with that person who are pushing the college to go after me for whatever the hell their reasons are. You know, maybe they disagree with my political opinions, particularly on the trans front. And that was the, that was the tweet, I think, that really probably initiated all this, right? I tweeted about... Elliot Page. And so I'm perfectly happy. What was that cut? Did they cut the content? Probably he said initiated there? all this, right? I tweeted about Elliot Page. And Literally, they cut that content. They cut it, dude. So I'm perfectly happy that I tweeted that particular tweet. And I also think in five years. Interesting. They cut when he brought up Elliot Page to the part where he's like, I'm glad I said that tweet. They cut out. They cut out. He said, and so Stone I'm Corbel, thanks for 31. Happy that I he probably misgendered, and then they cut it out. We did that particular tweet. Incredible. And I also think in five years, nobody will admit that they were ever in favor of any of this, right? This is far worse than the lobotomies of the 1930s. This is inexcusable. This is worse than lobotomies? Jordan Peterson, you have not been lobotomized. Fucking just take more benzos and actually finish the job at this point. What the fuck? <laughs> literally maybe jordan peterson should be lobotomized excusable you know i, I read one poor kid today Dumb on twitter he transitioner was decrying his castration fancy that and pointing out for example that you know he's a young guy he has no sexual drive whatsoever and he said well you know what, what am i going to do what have i lost i can't believe i was so stupid as to have gone through with this it's like you know fair enough kid you probably should have woken up but the people who facilitated that transformation your therapists and your surgeons what happened I think to do no harm what happened to do no harm dude Nobody talks trans people into being trans. <laughs> there's there's so much there's so much fucking they don't care. They the argument is trans people only take up 1% of the population. I'm not going to give a shit. And then when a fraction of that, not even 1% of that 1% detransitions validly by the way, you can your gender is whatever it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, your your gender is is validly whatever, whatever you feel it is. 
there are a minority that you, and there's some detransitioners. That's fine. They're allowed. Do whatever you want. A lot of the detransitioners, however, detransition due to social pressure, not because they're unhappy with the process. For the record, yeah, right. The bulk of them. I should also yeah. point out, just so just so everyone is aware of this, surgeons are much more likely to be psychopathic than people in the typical profession. That's a well documented phenomenon surgeons? in the psychological yeah. literature. Now, it's not only surgeons, obviously. You see it, that in other professions as well. But if you happen to be yeah, not Jordan Peterson, sadistic and psychopathic, a uh, profession that allows you to cut people up. That's that that, uh, and you think, well, there are no people like that. It's like, well, I think they just arrested some nurse in the UK for killing a bunch of babies in her psychopathic and sadistic manner. And so if you don't think there are people like that, you're naive beyond belief and you better bloody well pray that you never meet anyone like that because they're looking for someone just as naive as you to have their way with. <laughs> Surgeons are actually just looking to cut dicks off. Secret, secret dick cutting society of surgeons. True. There are countries now that have outlawed surgery for minors, transgender surgeries for minors. Like I believe yeah, Sweden has. They didn't exactly out states. outlaw it. They, um, I got corrected on that claim by community oh. notes on Twitter. Well, what happened was they... They've restricted surgery to minors to clinical trials. Yeah. Uh, so a lot, very rarely is a minor getting a surgery for this kind of thing because usually you need to have a developed body to have a successful, like, surgery. Like, you might be talking, they might be talking about, like, mastectomies, maybe? Maybe? Like, to remove breast tissue? But that can be prevented with a proper... Uh, puberty blocking. Hmm. Which is... He just lies tons. Yeah. You know, it's a detail. They they backtracked. There's no doubt Denmark, France, Sweden, the UK, Holland, the Netherlands, which is particularly relevant because that's where this gender-affirming surgical idiocy first made itself manifest. The it's crazy that you don't think someone can have the freedom to live in their body however they choose. You, It's crazy to value freedom of speech, but not freedom of bodily expression. Like... That's so much more fundamental than speech is your fucking body to be yourself. Argue with me for five minutes, Jordan Peterson. What's more fundamental, the right to be yourself or to talk aloud to somebody else? How? How, how does freedom of speech usurp that? It doesn't. He's just stupid. The Europeans mm. have woken up to the fact that, well, you know what? Turns out that there's no evidence that sterilizing young people and cutting off their breasts makes them happier. Isn't that a shock? Yep. I think this is going to play out. This is an argument that has to be had right now, and it's going to there's going to be such pushback from people who have gone through these surgeries starting now. It's already happening. Yeah. 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 You had some more things to read from the decision. Yeah. There well, there there are a couple of other. I don't know if they're funny, but there are a couple of other parts just to clarify what's going on. Is that this decision that they've come to order Dr. Peterson as a registered member of the college to complete a specified continuing education or remedial program, a SCRP regarding professionalism in public statements. Yeah. Specific continuing education or remedial program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is essentially social media training. Uh, the order is not disciplinary. It clarifies that here and does not prevent. That was, that's good, right? It's not a oh, punishment. Yeah, not, you just have oh, to pay for things you don't want to do. Yeah. Right. I have to pay for things I don't want to do. It's also not specified. So that what's specified yeah. is that I have to be retrained. What's specified in the specification is that I have to be retrained, regardless of how long that takes, until the people who are responsible for the retraining have decided that I've learned my lesson, right? So don't that, tell me that's that, yeah. specified and don't bloody well lie, you pikers, and tell me that that's not disciplinary. Pikers? A gambler who makes only small bets, a person who withdraws from a commitment. That's a New Zealand slang. Hm. How pathetic can you get? It's like, if you're going to come after me, why don't you bloody well admit that you're disciplining me, which is absolutely 100% obvious, especially because you're also claiming that I deserve to be disciplined. You know, it's like claiming you're in charge in favor of freedom of speech and then telling me that, well, except that, you know, you're a professional. And of course, we wouldn't want professionals to be able to, you know, tell them. I think freedom of expression is so much more fundamental than freedom of speech. And they're tied to each other. Like, freedom of expression envelops freedom of speech. And he just doesn't seem to be able to take that next step. It seems ideologically motivated, Jordan Peterson. Like, I'm not trans. I don't have... Like, my skin in the game is just that I, I care about people that are trans. But I care about people who are cis, too. And I care about people who are trans enough to, if I thought they were doing a bad thing, I'd be like, hey, you're doing a bad thing. But they're just being cute 
They're just like, I want. I feel like I want to be cuter than I am in whatever way that means to them. I feel like I'm cuter this way. I feel like I feel like I'm happier this way. I feel like I'm fucking nicer this way. I feel like I'm me this way. How is that wrong? How can you twist your mind? It's like he took this position and can't untake the position because his career hinges on it. Hmm. The truth or say what they think because everyone wants their professionals to lie to them because that's how you get the best advice and guidance, obviously. Yeah. I think what, what shocks me about this is you are basically being brought to task over the Joe Rogan podcast, one of the Joe Rogan podcasts, which is insane, um, and over political tweets. Like It says right here, a tweet on February 19th in which Dr. Peterson commented that an Ottawa city councillor was an appalling self-righteous moralizing mm -hmm. thing. An appalling thing. Self-righteous moralizing thing. Yeah, well, I used yeah. thing because <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble on the pronoun front. Oh, uh, well. I don't think that panned out well. Uh, well, we'll see. And so far, it's caused a certain amount of trouble. Okay, so there was the Ottawa City Councilor. Yeah, what other... What so, other? He uh, a tweet on January over. 2nd in which Dr. Peterson responded to an individual who expressed concern over overpopulation. Kill yourself. You're free to leave at any point. Kill yourself. That's what that says. That's how it's worded. Uh, and your response was, you're free to leave at any point. Now, I've done some sneaky KYSing in my time on Twitter. Don't get me wrong. Snort Clorox is my elite, my my uh, most recent one, allegedly. Um, not that I would admit that that's a KYS. I actually think that someone could snort Clorox uh, safely. Um, uh, dissolve, definitely good. Bash your head into a wall. <laughs> Smash your head into some concrete. Lobotomize yourself, etc. The person actually said, just so we get this right, that there were too many people on the planet. Yeah. Now, I'm not very happy with that statement uh -huh. at all. Because oh. I listen to people, I listen to what people say. And when people say, well, there should only be 500 million people on the planet because that's what the planet can sustain, I think, what do you plan to do with the other 7 billion, 500 million? They're inconvenient, are they? And you, yeah. what do you think they should be dispensed with? Just exactly what the hell are you saying? And if you <laughs> Well, first of all, that's not true. The carrying capacity of Earth with human ingenuity is much higher than the natural state of Earth without, like, you know, agriculture. Um, the overpopulation is more of, a, is more of an issue in regards to like resource distribution because we have greedy capitalists. Do you think that there are too many people? Well, what makes you so sure that you're not one of them, especially if you're the one Maybe that's concerned are. about it? Maybe you know, you're one of them. If the lifeboat is too crowded to float, maybe the on, morally appropriate thing to do is jump off, right? To save everybody else. Yeah. Everyone knows what you said. No one's confused about the statement. Not to pretend that, well, who is it? Is it the Africans who don't get to have fossil fuels, for example? Uh -oh. Is it people all over the world, the poor people who are multiplying so rapidly they're devouring the planet's resources? Should they all go? Yeah. And so I have absolutely no qualms whatsoever. I love that he... Uh, <laughs> the dehumanizing language of equating the Africans with the poor people? Cool. About calling someone out on it, especially when I'm doing it, obviously, ironically. You can't believe it is? I mean... I can believe he just said that. He says this shit constantly. No, they actually said, the bloody college said, the complaint was I was counseling to suicide. Okay, yeah. now really, who is stupid enough to think that? Well, obviously, the Canadian College of Psychologists and the Canadian courts. What do you mean, who's stupid? You said, what? It was clearly like a joke to be sassy, but you said it. <laughs> so yeah, There's another one. There's another one that kind of goes along with that. Where what? You just, you doubled down on they should walk into the fucking sea. Yeah. You're clearly joking and that this is what they say. Uh, so this is from the Joe Rogan joking? podcast. Speaking about air pollution and child deaths, Dr. Peterson said, it's just poor children and the world has too many people on it anyways, which is clearly sarcasm. Yeah, so maybe they got one wrong. That's in there. That sounds though. like sarcasm. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, and those are the, so just so everybody's watching and listening knows, so, you know, someone- Is he going to cry? I would love that, dude. Can take out a complaint by going and filling out a form at the Ontario College of Psychologists website. So if anybody out there is inclined to complain some more, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> but the college doesn't have to pursue those complaints because they can define them as vexatious and, and just troublemaking, right? So it isn't even only that members of the public, the millions of people that I'm communicating mm -hmm. with, let's say, are prone to complain, but that the college itself decided that that was sufficient grounds to threaten my license and to force me into re-education. So is it because- it could be because you were being you were being sassy about that and dismissing. Hmm, maybe. Patient. Of course, they're not doing it for disciplinary reasons. It's like what the what the I don't even understand what that means. If you're not doing it for disciplinary reasons, it's like why is it forced, and why am I being upgraded? That's like the definition of disciplinary. So that just shows you how mendacious the the decision is. Mendacious. Yeah, yeah. 
And then, and then it does go to outline. Uh, they could uh, see that, it as non-disciplinary reformation. You know what I mean? They could see it as like a... Maybe we can save him, boys. It's directed Dr. Probably not, though. They probably expected this. Peterson, enter a coaching program with either one or two individuals identified the pa by the panel to review, reflect on, and ameliorate his professionalism in public statements. Yep. The coaching program was to begin within three months and to be completed within 12. Costs associated with the coaching are borne by you. It also outlines that coaching doesn't... You're a millionaire. You'll be fine. Fucking Jesus Christ, dude. Stop. Stop complaining. And until you've successfully ameliorated your professionalism and learned yeah, something. Yeah, and so, and what the hell is that supposed to mean, precisely? I need a whole personality transplant, apparently. Yeah. But there's another... Yep. ...other problem, too, there. And here's the problem. True. I'm not wrong. Yeah, you are. So yeah. that's a big problem, and I, I swear I will do this. If I am required to undergo the retraining, I will undergo the retraining. And I will tape it, and I will broadcast it. And then everyone else can decide... Um, Okay. Then everyone else can decide for themselves just exactly what the hell's going on and when. I would love to see that because I guarantee it's going to be stuff like, all right, Jordan, so being transphobic sucks, and here's why. <laughs> whether or not I've contemplated my words, whether or not I've thought through everything I say carefully, whether or not I have any grounds for my opinions. You know, I don't say things that I haven't thought about and thought about a lot. Oh, wow. And so I agree with Canadians that Justin Trudeau is the worst prime minister that the country has ever had. 30% and I think of, th of Canadians. He's actually far worse than people think. Yeah. And I think... By the way, uh, they say that about every fucking president or prime minister that's currently in office. This is the worst one we've ever had. The professionals in Canada... No it's only been true once in my life, and that was Donald Trump. He was absolutely the worst. It's hard to be worse than, like, fucking George W. Bush to a millennial, and they jump the shark. Millennials have witnessed... The reason millennials don't have any any faith in this fucking country is because of, of the shit show we've witnessed <laughs> like it's not a viable play like we are a, it's a joke country a joke country this is the most ser one of the most serious countries on the planet and it's a joke we can do so much better than this bullshit god man we're just apes no longer have the right to express their thoughts which makes which invalidates them as useful professionals and I think they're pushed into a corner so badly that even the brave professionals I know, and I do know some, are unwilling to fight this, to even make public statements in support of me. And if you think that yeah, is man. the hallmark of a free country, there is really something wrong with you. You bloody well better wake up. And if you think that if that's happening to professionals, that it's not going to happen to you, well, you are exactly naive enough to deserve exactly what's coming down the pipeline for you. I, I guess one of the problems I see is, okay, so you're in a good position to fight this, even though it's costing, it is seriously costing an arm and a leg. Um, and it's time consuming and it's stressful, but at least you're not reliant on your clinical practice for livelihood, right? Yep, yep. Uh, as opposed to other people. What, what's the average Canadian supposed to do when they're living in a, in a society like this? Like, how do you fight? Because in my opinion, I don't know, I honestly don't know if you're, you can win this. I think Canada is crooked and woke very, very deep down. <laughs> crooked and woke. <laughs> I think it's crooked as well. I don't know about the fucking wokeness. Uh, weren't they just covering up the the bodies of like native children in uh, in uh, like church uh, schools and stuff? Weren't they just trying to cover that up? So I don't necessarily see this going in a good direction for your clinical license, at least in Ontario. What are average people supposed to do to try and stop their society from going in this kind of direction? Because it feels like like I moved, I just ran away. I was like, goodbye to this country. I'm going to America. It has its problems for sure, but at least there's freedom of speech built in there. Like, what does the average Canadian do to fight back against this? Get in involved in the political process at whatever level they can. Get involved in the school boards, get involved in the political parties, get involved in local elections, volunteer for election, start start differentiating between the false government state-funded legacy news and actual news if you can do that, even though that's become impossible in Canada too because yeah. now Canadians can't get news. It's like, look, here's the rule, Mick. This is the rule. All responsibility on the political front abdicated by the average citizen will be taken up by tyrants and used against you. He says that, and then he advocates for far right wing authoritarian, like billionaire suckling monsters constantly. So you either take responsibility for this, which means to get involved in the political process, or you suffer the consequences. Now, you know, a young person might be thinking, well, what could I do? And I would say, you know, that's actually not a good attitude. And I mean that practically, because what you will find if you're young, if you go volunteer for a political campaign, let's say, first of all, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to sharpen your political beliefs. You're going to learn how to put an argument forward. And then if you're competent and hardworking, you're going to find that avenues of opportunity open for you on the political front so quickly that you can hardly imagine it. And that's partly because most political organizations are chronically short of help 
and absolutely chronically short of competent help. And so if you stepped into the political arena, you'd learn to speak more fluently, you'd learn to put your arguments together, you'd learn to be more responsible, you'd take the responsibility. My left screen flickered, but my right screen didn't. ...ability onto yourself and strengthen yourself as a consequence. You'd keep the country on the straight and narrow and you'd keep it free and all sorts of opportunities would emerge for you. And so that's what you do. Now people don't do that. And it's partly also because they're taught, oh, you know, the whole system is so corrupt that nothing can be done about it. It's like, well, if that's the case, you're in real trouble. And if it's not the case, take advantage of the opportunity. Get out there. Do something about it. I actually don't hate what he's saying here, but not for the reasons he is saying it. <laughs> I, I agree, leftists. Get into politics. Uh, it is it is rife with incompetence, and it would be nice to have some competent people in there. I think about it a lot. You know. But also, I smoke a lot of weed. I like not having to wake up in the morning. So, I don't know. I think I care more about my personal life than I do about my possibility in politics. We'll see, though. You're a citizen. It means you have some responsibility. You're a citizen with. I just got. I just turned old enough to really run for. responsibility. You're headed for slavery. Simple as that. That's how the world works. If you don't stand up for yourself, obviously, the people who will exploit you will exploit you. Obviously. So, I don't think it is hopeless at all. I think that Canadians. I think that the fundamental bedrock of our institutions is still solidly enough in place, although it is threatened, that we... So is this like a thread that comes off the whole fucking thing? It's just like, it wind, it wound around it, but it's like coming off? It's driving me nuts. You don't have to walk... Or is this the cord from this and it's just lining up with the line here? It might just be the cord from the lab, mic. ...down this increasingly authoritarian route. And, you know, there's some positive signs. One of them being, for example, that the bloom is off the Trudeau rose. You know, there's a man who couldn't even tell the truth about his marriage. What's the alternative? You know, you what? said, for example, you left while there were business reasons. What? The truth about his marriage? What? For that too, because it does turn facts. out that the United States is a place much more, it's much more straightforward to do business in the United States. And yeah. most people who are watching listening will not know that Canadians are now, Canadians now make 60% as much as Americans make. 60%. And the gap is growing. And that's a huge difference. And we were at parity in the 1970s. It's a catastrophic difference. And Trudeau and his bloody minions, Stephen Guilbeau, prime among them, are doing, he said today, Guilbeau said today that the days of Free and plentiful energy are over. Well, there's no difference between energy Perfect. and wealth. And and there's particularly no difference between energy and wealth for poor people. Uh, capitalists are brain rotted, dude. <laughs> They're just so fucking brain rotted. Well, they don't have enough money. Well, we gotta, we gotta get these people more money or our society will eat them alive. We understand that this is a problem. Uh, maybe it's the money, Jordan. No! No! Not the money. We need money. What, what for, Jordan? For prosperity! We could all prosper without pay-gating stuff. No! They just don't get it, dude. Capitalists will never understand. You want to make poor people poor? You make energy expensive. Energy is work. You make work expensive, you, you demolish the poor, obviously. Demolish Well, them. I object to that. That's why I object to the climate fear-mongering apocalyptic lies, because it destroys the poor. Just so that the people who are screeching about the sky falling can feel momentarily moral about their role as planetary savior. Jordan Peterson, every summer since you've been born, well, since I've been born, has been the hottest summer on record. That is a trend. This is real. That he denies this is so fucking crazy. Even the Republican debate brought up climate change. <laughs> Come on, man. It's like, no, to hell with you. Seriously. You leave the poor alone. There's also definitely not one person who's screeching about the sky falling in terms of climate that's having problems affording energy. Not one of those people can't afford heat. Yeah, well, it, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's it's um, the people who are struggling to put food on their table and to keep their air conditioners on, to keep their heaters on in the winter, they're not playing moralistic games on the planetary savior side of things. No. Individual homes and their climate control within those homes are not responsible for climate change. Okay? Those are, those are, those, <laughs> those are not, that's not the problem. The problem is vast industri industry uh, that pollutes, that doesn't doesn't give a shit about the environment, fossil fuel burnings, and then obviously like cars and automobiles that we have centralized our entire society around inappropriately. No, they're just trying to Dude, scrabble forward with a certain degree of hope. It's appalling to see the left support this, for example, because in principle, the, the left, left is the voice of the underclass, let's say. and. Sure. It's obvious that the progressives will sacrifice the poor nope. to nature, right? To nature worship, to Gaia, this imaginary catastrophe that justifies degrowth, for example. What? 
degrowth? What is he talking about? I I just don't want you to die in the heat uh or or uh, anything like uh, what what? We can we, we it's about not pursuing capital instead of just helping people. The pursuit of capital is what drives climate change. These people are fucking stupid, dude. What the hell do you think degrowth means? If you don't think that means starving poor people, you're an idiot. And you might say, well, there's too many people on the planet anyways. In which case, I would say, then leave. Well, is there anything else you think we should get into details about this? Or does that give people a good idea about what's going on? We can continue updating people, but this is is the big story now. Hopefully we can get this covered by insurance because, oof. Well, insurance for a practitioner is mandatory. And insurance for a practitioner is mandatory for these reasons. And so it would be quite the situation if it turned out that the insurance, which I was paying, because that was mandatory, also fails to cover this sequence of events. So we'll see about that. But I'll take this. I will take this as far as necessary. <laughs> what a baddie, dude. So. He's such a fucking And like, cool if I tell hero. you, Matt, Mick, I am very much inclined, as you know, to, if I'm accused of doing something, to rake myself over the coals and to try to find out if I did something wrong. And I went yeah. through those allegations at Christmas in detail. It was very stressful because I thought, you know, well, yeah. maybe there's something here and that I went beyond it's crazy that he doesn't he he just he just outright cannot understand he's so fundamentally incorrect maybe i'm just wrong he says in battles with yes that's true that's it uh scaff as an uh, as a canadian i'd first like to apologize for jp on your airways having said that i love when he goes off the problem is canadian hogs are quickly losing more ground every election cycle and he's just big mad i love it liberals rely on our nbdp to do anything and conservatives have no leverage it's just too funny the bounds of reasonable conduct and i was very apprehensive there were 13 charges at that point they've dropped seven god only knows why they dropped those seven it's just arbitrary but i went through all 13 in detail hundreds of pages of allegations and when i came out of that i thought well, first of all, I thought, how daft can you be to pursue allegations put forward by people who lied about the fact they were clients of mine? It's great that he is like, what did I, I didn't do anything wrong. And then they cut the Elliot Page segment hard because he probably violated what they're talking about in that. You know, th- those should have been just taken off the table instantly, obviously. You can't start by trusting the word of someone who lies in writing about something fundamental. Oh, really, Jordan? Hmm. You've written books that are filled with lies. So that was kind of a relief in some sense, right? Because I thought, well, that sheds a pretty dim light on the procedures of the college. And then I went through each allegation in turn. And I think the most damning, as I said, was the tweet in relationship to Elliot Page. That was certainly the one that caused the most public trouble. And he cut it out. It's like, I got to tell you, kiddo, that's looking pretty good now. So what's looking good now? Despite my proclivity to feel guilt, which is quite substantive. He says that and he has showed none. And despite my temperamental unwillingness to engage in conflict, I don't see, not only do I not see what I did wrong, I think what I've done on the public communication front is my responsibility as a clinician to tell the truth about what I see. And so beautiful. So we'll make it public in every possible way. And I'll bring to bear every single bit of public pressure I can possibly muster on this particular topic. The Donald Trump uh, plan. I don't know if that's going to work. It doesn't seem to be working. And we will watch over the next three years, because that's how long it'll take, exactly how this plays out. So, and I've, you know, we've cordoned off our life. I can deal with this without it having interfere with everything else I'm doing. I've talked to Tammy. I've talked to you and Julian. My family's on my side. We're solidly committed to this. I have a good legal team. We have the money necessary to do this and we have the connections. So if the college wants to re-educate me, they're more than welcome to try. But if they think they're going to do it in secret, they've got another thing coming. Whoa! God, he's so up yours, woke moralists. That's a big... Sheesh! Owned. I feel owned. Do you feel owned? Well, with that, it was nice talking to you. Have fun at the presidential debate tonight. I like your suit. Oh, thank you. Isn't it ridiculous? Yeah, it's good. You stand out. I like it. Very subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I thought I'd blend in with the crowd tonight, you know? You nice. know, the Americans, they're very theatrical, right? This Everything Americans do is theatrical. And so this presidential debate... Everything it's- Americans do is theatrical? Theater of the best sort. And... I'm huh? down here to have an adventure, you know? And so, and it's what I should be concentrating on. And my writing, yeah. you know? But in for a penny, in for a pound. Go. 
Sorry, not profound, and no amount of right-wing moralizing will change that. True. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay, kiddo. Bye, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. A loving daughter-father relationship? Very much. I can't imagine talking to my kid. Oh. I don't have a kid. I can't imagine talking to my kid and not being like, hey, love you, boo-boo, or whatever their nickname is. Have a good day. Love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how do you not... <laughs> How do you not feel? Anyway, so strange. Whoa, whoa, chat. That's cool. What a, what a, what an episode of Jordan Peterson crying about stuff that makes him sad. Love it. I love that for him. I'm excited. I'm excited to see Jordan Peterson's steady decline back into benzo coma, and then his. I guess he'll just uh, he'll stop being part of this overpopulated planet pretty soon, huh? Nice.